Well, finally, we have this cancer study done and published in a journal, and I will put that link down below. Many of you have contributed to this cancer study that we did in Europe. It was a study done on mice. And today I'm gonna to summarize the results in simple terminology, as simple as I can explain it. But I will put a link down below so you can read the actual study, but I'm gonna warn you in advance, you'll probably fall asleep because there are a lot of large medical terms. So what was the study about? What we did is we compared one of the most powerful chemotherapy drugs, cisplatin, with several combinations of natural compounds like EGC in green extract tea, alpha lipoic acid, hydroxy citrate, which is in that plant called Garcinia cambogia. A lot of people associate that with weight loss, but it also has an anti-cancer effect. We also included allicin, which is in garlic and red algae, and one drug called lithostat, which is for kidney stones. And there's a very important reason why we selected these compounds. There is an Achilles heel um, for cancer cells, okay? An Achilles heel is a concept to describe, despite something being strong, there's a weak link or a vulnerability that ends up in a downfall of something. So with cancer cells, there is a vulnerable weak link that is not present in normal cells, okay? And I'm gonna to try to explain this in the simplest terms as I can. Just picture the cancer cells having this little door, okay? And the door is a metabolic pathway. It's a pathway that allows the cancer cells to do certain things. This specific enzyme or door is called SCOT. That's the short name that allows the cancer cells to build its membranes, okay? So the strategy that we used was to block the raw materials necessary to build the membrane. We did not try to starve off the fuel for cancer. We just focused on inhibiting the formation of a cancer cell's membrane because without that membrane, the cancer cells can't grow. So we selected mostly natural things that inhibit SCOT, inhibit this enzyme. And we found some very interesting things, okay? Not only did the results end up being 70% of what this powerful chemo drug did, let's just say that this drug killed 100% of all the cancer cells, right? Well, various combinations of natural compounds killed 70% of those cancer cells. Was it 100%? No, but it was 70% and that is significant. Now you might be asking yourself, why did the natural remedies only kill 70% versus the powerful chemo drug that killed 100%. What's really interesting about a tumor cell is that it not only has cancer cells, but it also has immune cells. And those immune cells are the hosts. It's our own immune cells. And chemo drugs kill both cancer cells and our immune cells, whereas the natural compounds will kill the cancer cells, but not your immune cells. So you are gonna have some residual cells within the volume of the tumor that are immune cells. Because at the end of our study, they really looked at the volume shrinkage of a tumor. However, we did not differentiate if part of that volume is our own immune cells versus just the cancer cells. So when you have something that can significantly reduce cancer cells, and not at the same time kill off your own immune system, that's something that is very, very awesome. Now, there was something else very, very interesting about this study. Uh, there was also a significant decrease in something called NFKB. And you can look at this as like a biomarker for inflammation and proliferation, which is spreading of something. You see, this marker is often seen in many malignancies, okay? Because it's a signaling molecule. And so there's a big association between cancer cells spreading into areas with inflammation. So not only did we see a significant killing of cancer cells, but we saw a significant decrease in inflammation and the spreading effect of cancer. And I think this occurred simply because the natural compounds that we use didn't destroy the immune system. So the immune system was able to help reduce the inflammation and the proliferation. 
Now, the study that we did is piggybacked on another study, which I will put that link down below, using this protocol called Metablock, which is basically a combination of the compound in green tea, as well as alpha lipoic acid. And that study basically compared using this drug, cisplatin, okay, a very powerful chemotherapy drug, and was demonstrated that adding these two natural remedies improved the outcomes. And that's what this study was based on. But we added some additional things to really close this door from every different angle. Now, will this work for you? I have no idea. But I'm going to give you my personal opinion on what I would do if I had cancer. Of course, I would do this combination up to five. I wouldn't necessarily take lithostat, which is a drug, because I would like to stick with the natural remedies. But lithostat is a powerful SCOT inhibitor, but these are also inhibitors. But I would also add prolonged fasting because I did two interviews that combined these with prolonged fasting with some amazing, amazing results. Now, the question that a lot of people want to know is like, how do you convert the dosage of these from a mouse to a human, okay? Well, there's a document that someone else put together that you can download right here on a protocol that they came up with, as well as a recommended eating plan. So you can download that right now. But if you haven't seen my recent video on an amazing success story with cancer, I put it up right here. Check it out.